Hey guys, it's Carolina here from Carolina's Crafts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another tutorial for you guys today and this is a collaboration with Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and it's our Scrappy Christmas Crafts series. And if you guys have been following along since the beginning of this year from January of 2022, we have been posting a project tutorial every single month to show you guys how to make the project and the album or the folio or whatever we are showing you guys and we are also using our christmas paper since we decided we just have way too much christmas paper and we wanted to use it up now when you guys make your project you do not have to use christmas paper and i have been posting other projects i have made with the same tutorials not using christmas paper after i post my christmas one because i always end up making a second base and then i just do something else usually that's not christmas so i have been sharing that as well so do not feel like you have to use up your christmas paper you can if you'd like and join us on the scrappy christmas craft series otherwise use whatever paper you would like to use and just follow along with the tutorial if you do post your projects on either YouTube or Instagram or wherever, please use the hashtag Scrappy Christmas Crafts. I will put it up here so you guys can see it. And make sure to tag me at Carolina's Crafts and Tiffany at Let's Get Scrappy One on Instagram and just Let's Get Scrappy on YouTube. Um, so definitely tag us so that we can see what you guys are creating as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started and I'm going to show you guys what this project looks like on the inside before we get started on the tutorial. So when I made this tutorial or this project and I was coming up with the design, I wasn't even thinking that I could use 6x6 paper with this. I was just using scrap chipboard that I had organized a little while back from going through all my scraps of chipboard and finding the biggest pieces I had available and then just kind of bundling them together. And so I ended up with this size, which is four and a quarter by six and a quarter with a one and a, one and a quarter inch spine. And it's so cute. And it turned out to work perfectly with six by six paper. So for this project in particular, I used the Holly Jolly Collection from My Mind's Eye um, and it just comes with 24 sheets. It's like a pastel Christmas and I love it. I still have nine sheets left in here plus a little bit of scraps. Um, so I have to figure out what to do with that next. But the rest of the sheets of paper I did use in this adorable um, album here. Also, in case you guys are interested in purchasing this album, I will have it linked in the description box down below. You could find it in my Etsy shop. So I will have that in the description box if you guys are interested. And I do also have the cutting guide available on my coffee website. So I will have a link to that down below as well in case you guys like to have the cutting guide in front of you. You guys want to print it out, have it in front of you, whatever it is while you guys are making this project. It is available for free. But I do appreciate any donations that you guys send my way on the coffee website um, just to say kind of thank you for making the cutting guide in the first place. Um, but I do hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys consider um, buying me a coffee. Um, so that is available. Everything is linked down below. Um, so this project is so adorable. I have my regular stitching. I did some flowers on here. The cover says, oh, what fun. I do have the cut aparts from the collection. They are not in the six by six paper pad, but I do have, or the journal cards, they're called journal cards. So I do have those um, in my stash as well. So I was able to use that. This is what my spine looks like. And the back side, which I still have to add my handmade um, logo sticker. And on the back side, I did do the paper piecing with the hexagon punch, but instead of using the two inch punch, I used the one inch punch this time because it was a smaller project and I just thought it was super cute. My scraps were also smaller. Um, so I was able to use that punch and still make a beautiful back cover. Then I have a ho 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 um, ribbon closure here. Then when you open this up, I have a pocket on the inside here with some more of the journal cards that I have from the collection and in my stash. So those just fit in there. Now here I have another cut apart and this is magnetized closed. Opens up, you could add a photo, photo, photo. 
and then this opens up this way and this one opens up this way and you can add a large photo here then on top of that you could do some journaling or add more photos because both of these open up top and bottom so you could add a little something there and super cute then it just magnetizes closed so the next page looks like this it says holly jolly um, i do have a tag in the back here this is kind of like a little pocket thing if you guys could see just like so and that slides in there with that little seam binding peeking out i have a ribbon closure here with another cut apart that says holly jolly and this opens up like this and these guys the white photo mats here are removable i used removable tape so that you'll be able to lift it back up um, and you can put down your four by five not four by five sorry three by five size photo here i think it's a teeny bit smaller than three like two and seven eighths by five or by four and seven eighths um but you have two spaces here and then you also have two spaces going this way so this is kind of like a um z fold but you could just go like this or go like this and it's super cute and then that just has the ribbon tie closure to keep that closed I find magnets really hard to use on the Z folds because you would need to use a magnet on each side and I just feel like the ribbon closure is cuter in that way. So that's there. Then here on the front I have a belly band here with a tag I just made using up like some scraps that I had and a journal card as well. So you could do some journaling on there and this is just in this belly band. And then this is magnetized here and this flips open like so and then this flips open again here so you have plenty of space for lots of photos and that's magnetized and then this flips this way here I have another pocket with a tag and a journal card so that's what that looks like And then this flips down like so. So you can add a large photo here. And here you have a little waterfall. So that's a cut apart, it says Noel, and it just opens up like that. So you could add photos and do journaling and whatnot. And that's what that looks like. And that magnetizes back closed. So that is the whole album. I didn't add anything to the back because although I had originally planned to, it kind of was filling out fast so i didn't want to bulk it up too much especially once photos go in here this will expand a little bit so i wanted to leave some room and not bulk it up um, even further so i did not add anything to the back but i thought that would be cute for like a large um, family photo like a full-size family photo of everybody gathered around the christmas tree and whatnot so that is this project i will be showing you guys how to make don't forget to check out Tiffany's tutorial once you are done. I did not make that a cute bow. Once you are done watching this tutorial, don't forget to check out Tiffany's project and see what she created for you guys. I will also have the playlist linked down below in case you guys want to see all the projects that we have made so far with the tutorials and everything. I will have that playlist linked down below in the description box. Again, you can purchase this in my Etsy shop. And the free cutting guide is available on my coffee website. So that is all linked down below. All right, guys, so let's get started. And I'm going to show you guys how to make this adorable mini album. To start off, you are going to need two pieces of chipboard that measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I already taped to the back of mine just to save some time. And then for the spine, you're going to need a piece that measures one and a quarter by six and a quarter. Then to attach that, you're going to need one piece that's eight and a half by 11. You can use two because you do need another piece. I'm just using a scrappy. Um, I don't even know what this measures, but this part does not have to be precise because you could just use another piece that's eight and a half by 11. So this one is eight and a half by five. So I am going to attach these here. 
just using my, I think it's like a 3 8 inch score tape. I think it's a little bit less than a half an inch, which I will have linked down below. You guys know I link everything. I'll link the paper pad down below, the seam binding down below, literally everything I could find, I will link down below for you guys. So I attach that here, peel back a little piece so I could line this next one up on top of it. And press down and peel the tape off. Okay, so that is gonna be holding, or that's like the outside of my album. So normally I put the spine right in the center. I'm not gonna do that here. I'm gonna do this, this one in the center on top of where we just um, connected the pieces together because that will stay put a little bit better. Normally I try to do it on the spine if I am making a bigger project, but this one is fairly small, so I am able to do that. If I do it on the spine, I'm for sure gonna get cracking. So let's not do that. So I'm gonna put this like in the center here and just press down. Then I'm gonna grab my quarter inch tape and I just like to line it up along the edge of that chipboard and that acts as my spacer for my next piece. So then I'll put down my spine. And I do recommend using double-sided tape for this. Um, you do not want any bubbles, which is why I don't use glue, because I wanna make sure everything is stuck down, no bubbles, no anything. Um, when I make my cover because we will be folding it and whatnot and I just I don't want any bubbles so then I'm adding this quarter inch tape again and then I'm gonna add my last piece okay and just line that up with your other chipboard, make sure the top and bottom are lined up and then go ahead and press down. All right, so now I am grabbing, actually I need to cut off some of this. Notice how I still have extra. So yes, I was just using a scrap. It doesn't even have to be as big as mine. And I'm just gonna cut off some on both sides. Okay, so then I'm grabbing my miter corner tool. This just helps me cut my paper here at an angle so that when I go to fold it, there is no chipboard showing. If you do not have a quarter corner miter tool, which I will link this one down below and I'll link my rotary cutter too and the mat. But if you don't have one, just make sure to leave some space between the chipboard and the edge of your paper so that when you go to fold it, you do not see the chipboard. If you go too close, you will be able to see that chipboard. Um, so make sure you just leave a little bit of a space and then miter your corners, just like I'm doing here. I always use this thing. I just don't want to risk not being able to cover my chipboard. All right, so next up, you are going to outline the edges of your cover with some more tape. You see why I use up a lot of tape, guys? All the time. So I only do two rows of tape. Anything after that, I just cut off the extra cardstock. You do not need more than that. I feel like one is not enough, but two is like the perfect amount. Okay, make sure those are all burnished. Because now I'm gonna go back in with my scissors and all this extra after my two rows of tape, I am just simply cutting off with scissors. It doesn't matter if it's straight or not. This is the inside of your album that's gonna get covered up with uh, patterned paper anyway. So don't even worry about that. Okie dokie. So I have that done. Now I could start peeling off 
my tape and I also need to get the inside. It is helpful to have one of these pokey tools to definitely get that inside tape lifted up. All right, so I have the top off also. I'm gonna tuck in any of my tape that's like overhanging and I'm just gonna press down against my table and just work it back and forth before I press down completely just to make sure that I don't have cracking or limited cracking. Just like that. And then I'll go in with my bone folder and make sure it's stuck down. And also make sure to tuck your corners in. So you could use your fingernail for this or you could use a bone folder. You are just tucking the corners in so that when you fold those pieces over there, they're not very sharp. Then do the opposite side. I always start on the long sides first before I do like the shorter sides of my album. It's just the way that I do it. Okay, work that in, then press down. Make sure to tuck your corners in here as well. Okay, and then you're gonna do the outsides. And then the other side. Okie dokie guys. So that is the outside. And I'm just gonna press down with my bone folder into those edges here where it's creased. And that is the base of our album so far. Super adorable. Now let's do the hinge for the inside. So for your hinge, you're gonna need one piece that measures six and a half by six. On the six and a half inch side, which is this way, you are gonna score at two inches, two and a half, then three inches. And I don't know if you guys could tell, but that center line is smaller than my other lines. So my hinges are half an inch, but my center in between the two like signatures is three eighths of an inch. So it's two, two and a half, three, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, and four and three eighths. So that's just kind of how I did mine. On the back here, I just have the tape that I'm gonna put together. And on the front here, I have some thinner tape because this is what my hinges or my signatures are gonna attach to. So on the back side, I have a piece of tape between the half an inch. So this is half an inch, half an inch, three eighths of an inch, half an inch, half an inch. Um, you are gonna tape the two half an inches together. So before I do that, let me just start folding to kind of get my lines worked in. So right here on the half inch, that's where it's gonna get taped together, okay? But for now, I'm just gonna fold all these pieces forward and back. So now that they're folded, on the back side, take off that half an inch. This half an inch is gonna get attached to that other half an inch here. Make sure to burnish that, okay? And then this other half an inch is gonna get attached to this half an inch. So this piece is gonna stay because that's our gusset, but this half an inch will flip over the other way and get attached. Okay, so that's what I'm left with on the back. And then this is the front, which I have my two hinges with a 3 8 spine in between. I'm also going to miter these so that it's a little easier when I go to put down um, my pocket pages and you want to do that on both sides of each hinge cut from corner to corner that's all that means you're just cutting off a little teeny triangle from the score line to the edge all right so everything else is taped up I just need to put some tape on the back side and again, all of the measurements and everything are also available on the cutting guide, so you could use that as a reference. 
All right, so I'm just attaching some tape here. And this is like a bigger two inch tape, which I could also have linked down below for you guys. Okay, and then on that little center piece, I am just gonna use some of this other tape just to get in there. All right, you wanna make sure that this is burnished down completely. All right, then I'm gonna peel this tape off. And I have a teeny bit of overhang that I'm seeing. So you're gonna fold that tape in to the back. You don't wanna see that after you put down your spine. So just make sure that's hiding. I do like to reinforce mine with some additional glue. I'm using the Barely Art glue, which I will also link down below for you guys. I wanna make sure to go in like those creases, but also just all around my spine. I do not want this to move. I do not want this to fall apart. This is what basically holds my pages inside my album. Don't, don't like cheap out on this on this part, okay? So then you're gonna add your paper down. All right, make sure it's as straight as possible and you're trying to get it in the center. So I think something like here is good for me. All right, then press down. And then you also wanna work these in. So you wanna flip these back and forth while burnishing them at the same time. Your hinges, you want them to be able to move freely. So work them back and forth a bunch of times. See how now like they just freely move for me? That's what you want. Then make sure these are burnished. And you could start going in with your bone folder and along that other line where you had that other crease before, just crease those again so that you're able to fold this. And then I go in here as well. And same thing here. So that's what I have and that's our album so far. So I pretty much did get it in the center. I did go a little more to the left, but that's okay. Now I could choose like whether to flip it this way, depends on where I'm gonna have um, more bulk. Is it gonna be on this side or this side? But I think my bulk is gonna be in the back, yeah. So I'm gonna make sure to keep it this way so that have I have that little bit of extra room on the back side because that's where more of my bulk is in the back. So now we can put this aside and we can start working on our pocket pages. Okie dokie guys, so for the pocket pages, let me get those pieces. You're gonna need two pieces that measure four by six. All right, they're just four inches by six inches. This is all in the cutting guide. And then you're also gonna need two pieces that measure four inches by seven inches. And on the seven inch side, so this way, you're gonna score a half an inch on this side and then half an inch on this side. So you could do half an inch, then flip it in your scoreboard and do the other half. So that's all you're gonna do for those pocket pages. Since we only have two signatures, you only need two of each. And I'm gonna go ahead and burnish those pieces. Is it burnishing or creasing, folding? I don't even know. All right, so I got my two pieces. Then I'm just gonna take um, the ones that have the scored pieces on them, just attach some glue to one side first. Okay, then I'm gonna line this other piece up with the bottom 
and then just like so, and then go ahead and press down. And that gives me my pocket page. Okay, so when I open that up, those are attached, and then I'm gonna flip it and do the other creased piece. So that is my pocket page like so. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one since, like I said, we do need to have two of these. Okay, so I have my two pocket pages done, and now we can build on these two. So before I even do that, for the inside front cover, um, I'm gonna take one piece, and it just it's just a pocket. You could add whatever you want there, you could add flaps, whatever, but I just added a pocket. So my inside cover pocket measures five and one eighth by two and three quarters. Since this measures four and a quarter, that means my page size is four and one eighth. So this, when you score on two sides on the five and one eighth inch side, is gonna go down to four and one eighth because you're scoring half an inch here, half an inch here. So you're taking away an inch. Um, so that's why we're doing it that way. Then um, on the two and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch, which is your bottom piece. So you return it and then score here. So notice how I have three lines. One piece does not have the lines. All right, so you're gonna miter your corners, which just means you're gonna cut these at an angle. So you have two triangles cut off and I'm going to go ahead and fold that. Now I am not attaching this yet because one, I need to add my patterned paper, but two, I also need to figure out what patterned paper I'm using for the pocket so that I could also do use my, um, what is it called? My pocket, my pocket punch, my envelope punch board and it creates that little notch here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here, I cut off the triangles. Nothing touches here once I have it folded, which is perfect and that's exactly what you want. So that's gonna go there. For now, you guys know, I just love paper clipping things. So we're just gonna paper clip that right there and that's where that's gonna go later. Okay, back to building on top of my um, pocket pages. Let's start with one. So page one, guys. Page one, you are going to need two pieces that measure four and a quarter by two and seven eighths. On the four and a quarter inch side, which is the long side, you're gonna score at half an inch. Okay, so I have my two pieces here, scored at half an inch, and I'm just gonna fold that. All right, just like that. These two pieces are gonna get attached here on the right hand side. So you're gonna take your glue and just attach it on the right hand side. And make sure my other one fits here as well so I can move this one up a teeny bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna glue my other one. Okay, just like that. So what we did here is just created two flaps for that first page, like two individual flaps. Additionally, for that, you're gonna need two pieces that measure three and three quarters by three and three eighths. I know you guys don't like the eighth sizes, but that's just what it is. So on the three and three eighth inch side, which is the shorter side, you're gonna score this at half an inch. 
and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you guys what we're doing with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish those. I might need to cut them down just a smidge, but we don't have to use our like paper cutter for that. We could just use scissors. So I'm gonna put some glue onto that crease piece. And I'm gonna attach this. So this one, the top, the flap is gonna get attached to the top of this um, flap. And you don't wanna make sure to go all the way to the end because you wanna make sure you could still fold this. Now, when you do it that way, you will notice some overhang. As you guys could see here, I do have some overhang from the original to the uh, piece I just added on, but that's what we're gonna cut off. Then the bottom piece, I'm gonna attach glue on that flap as well. But instead of attaching this one on the top, I'm gonna attach that flap on the bottom here, just so it flips down the other way. Okay, and then I wanna make sure that closes. Always make sure it closes before you decide to completely stick it down. So these both have overhang and that was to be expected. And I'm just gonna cut that off. All right, so that's that. These will both fold like that. And then for a three by four cut apart, you're gonna need a piece that measures four and one eighth by three and five eighths. That way when you add your three by four cut apart, you will still have um, a little bit of, a, of your black um, cardstock border or whatever cardstock you choose to use. On the three and five eighth inside, you're gonna score at half an inch. Or if you don't score this way and you're scoring on this way, it's at three and one eighth of an inch. So it just depends. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that and I'm gonna stick that down. All right, so this one, you wanna make sure it's like in the center because this will keep your other pieces closed since we will be adding magnets much later on. So when you go to like mat your papers, you'll add magnets, but I will write it down just so I don't forget at some point. So you're gonna need two magnets, one here, one here, because you have two flaps and each of these is gonna have like a magnet like here and then a magnet up here. All right, so, well, not that high up, it's gonna be here, but you guys get the point. So that will keep these two closed, then these will both open up like so, and then these will open up like that. So that is super fun, that is all page one. Now for page two, I'm gonna flip this over to the back side. Page two, you are going to need one piece that measures five inches by nine and a half inches. And you're gonna score on the nine and a half inch side, which is the long side at three inches, six inches and nine inches so that you have a half inch piece here and then three inches all around. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that up. And I'm gonna fold this one in, fold this one back. It's like a mountain valley fold and then, then fold this one the opposite way also just like so, okay? So it just looks like that. You're also gonna need one piece that measures five inches by three and a half inches and you're gonna score on the three and a half inch side at half an inch. So I usually do it at three inches because I like to score on the right hand side, but half an inch is what you are um, scoring. Okay, so when you have this piece here, I decided I wanted a cute little pocket up here. So I did make my little pocket by adding this additional piece. So where this is here, okay, I'm gonna put some glue here. You are gonna add this other piece 
but not where the flap is. You're gonna add it where the other side is that we just cut. So you wanna have that closed, line it up, and put that piece down and press down. So that is what's gonna create your pocket. Then on that original piece that was nine and a half inches, that one had a flap as well. That will get attached also to the inside here, or to this rather. Okay. So then you're gonna burnish that. And that is just like an additional pocket that I made there. So now you have this that still opens up but now you have a cute little pocket back there. Let me just make sure mine is stuck down. So this is something I'm not gonna add on here yet because you might wanna add your paper in the background first or cut up some scraps and put it down, but you do wanna probably do that first. So I'm just gonna paper clip this. And also by adding that pocket, pocket in the back, you can add your ribbon closure here so you'd add ribbon going across the back and then leave your strings and that would allow you to tie it on the front. Okay, so that is page two, all paper clipped and ready to go. Then page three, we're gonna need our other pocket page here. So page three is easy as well. You're gonna need two pieces that measure four and a quarter by six. On the four and a quarter inch side, you're gonna score this at half an inch. So it's just two pieces just like that. Very simple, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that. And I'm just gonna add them on opposite sides to my blank pocket page. So one side, I'm gonna put glue down on that scored like hinge piece that I'm that I have here and I'm just going to attach it to the right hand side make sure to just line it up all right go ahead and make sure that's stuck down so that's one piece and then same thing with the other piece, you're just gonna attach it to the other side this time. Okay, so this flap is down here. This one I'm gonna attach on the opposite side. going to go ahead and burnish that so then this will close this will close I will have magnets here so I will write that down um, I'll probably have two smaller ones here just because it's like a bigger page and those will magnetize closed and then on this piece I will have a belly band which measures three and three quarters by two inches and I'm just going to glue a little piece um, here and here just a little thing of glue and that will get stuck down on the outside here but for now because we need to add our paper first I am just gonna add that belly band there okay and then page four our very last page super easy project right guys I hope you guys are following along um, so page four this one has that flap in a pocket and then a waterfall on the inside so this one, you're gonna need your three pieces for the waterfall, which measure three and one eighth by four and five eighth. On the four and a five eighth inch side, which is the long side, you are gonna score at half an inch. So that when you add your um, cut apart to that first one or whatever, you could fit a three by four cut apart. So I cannot glue these down yet either because obviously I need to glue down my paper first. Okay, but I can go ahead and burnish them. So when you do attach these later, you'll add down your paper first. You'll add this one down here. Then you'll open this one up. You'll add your next one down right underneath it, leaving that half an inch like space where that where you glued down and so on. So you'll be able to add all three there. 
but again, I can't do that until I have everything else down. Then you're gonna need your flap piece. Your flap measures six and a half by three and a half. And on the six and a half inch side, you're gonna score a half an inch. So this should be the same height as your pocket page here. And you're just gonna glue this right in the center at the very bottom. So my, I know it looks upside down, but my flap is here. You're gonna glue this at the bottom and you're gonna just try to put it in the center. That way, when you do have your waterfall in, as long as it's pretty much in the center, and you do have some wiggle room, um, but that way you won't see the waterfall underneath it when it's closed. So I will add magnet here at the bottom and magnet here, because I need to include my magnet. And then for the little pocket on the outside, you're gonna need a piece that measures four and a half by three on the four and a half inch side, which is this way, you're gonna score at half an inch on each side. And then on the three on the three and a half or on the three inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. Then go ahead and miter your pocket. And then I'm just gonna fold. Now this is another one that I cannot glue down just yet because not only do I have to add my paper first, um, but I also want to make sure I get my little notch in there. So I'm just going to paper clip this to the bottom here. That'll stay here. That's my little pocket. And then I will paper clip my waterfall here as well. So that is basically your whole entire, um, album here when you add your pocket pages to the inside and then you just decorate and whatever but when you add your pack pocket pages to the inside obviously you have this opening kind of like pocket piece you will add those onto your hinge all right so my hinge is going to go into the pocket piece here and don't press down all the way notice how i don't have tape i'm going to pull this out a little right notice how my tape doesn't start until like here that's where I'm gonna attach it. There's still some hinge there and that's what you want so that you're able to like fold these a little bit better. Actually, wait, I think I just, I messed up on something. Wait a second, yes I did. Time out guys, I was supposed to have two score lines on here. All right, so I already glued this down. When you do your flap on the back side, I want to make sure there's a little bit of a gusset there. So I will make sure to change that in the cutting guide. But I had my score line here. I'm just gonna line it up where I had my score line. And I wanted another score line, just an eighth of an inch. Oh, that's not even. This is hard. All right, let's line it up this way. All right, so I will have that in the cutting guide. I will change that. So this does end up being a little shorter and that's how my other one is as well. But I need that gusset there because the waterfall, you know, it might bulk up a little. So you wanna have some kind of a gusset just like that. So that's gonna be like squared off like so. And then this sits there. Okay, so I'll make sure to change that in the cutting guide. Um, but yeah, then these pages will just all go inside here on top of that and you would decorate. I like to just decorate them first so I'm not gonna add them in. And I'm just gonna hold on to this just like that until I do get a chance to decorate it. But again, this is what the final project looks like. It is absolutely adorable. It's a fun little album with flip outs and space for photos and journaling and little tuck spots and the belly bands. And I just really love how it turned out so i hope you guys give it a try don't forget to check out tiffany's video next to see what she created and again this is available in my etsy shop and there is a cutting guide available which i will change all those measurements so that you guys have all the correct ones with the score lines and everything with that gusset so i'll make sure to do that um but that's it i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to tag tiffany and i in your projects and also use the hashtag scrappy Christmas crafts. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next crafty video. Talk to you soon. Bye.